it's only so difficult. It's really hard to get down in one take. <laughs> Here I'm getting ready to play a pretty difficult song. Getting just the notes right is an accomplishment on its own. But when you need to think about the actual underlying bigger concept of it all, and still play all the notes right, now that's a challenge on a whole other level. So uh, ready when you are. Hi, my name is Paul Davids, and this video is about one of my favorite songs by one of the most beloved guitar players of modern age. A song that's been a nemesis to a lot of guitar players since its release back in 2001. The song is Neon by John Mayer. <laughs> John Mayer's renowned guitar style has always been a major influence for many aspiring guitarists. Also for me, when I started to just plow through his tunes after the release of Continuum in 2006 and the Life in LA DVD two years later, I started to learn all of his songs, from his iconic ballad Slow Dancing in the Burning Room to the acoustic song Stop This Train. But seeing him play Neon for the first time live was quite the thing. The bizarre left hand shapes, the seemingly odd right hand plucking technique, the low E string tuned to C, what is happening? In any case, I decided to leave that song for what it was. I don't know if I can speak for you, but for me the Live in LA version is even more fascinating. Maybe. Because his guitar is carrying the entire song, other than the studio version, which is played on the electric guitar and the whole band backing him up. So that's why in this video, we're looking at that version. So now fast forward to many years later, my YouTube channel was doing fine, I had 62,000 subscribers and at this time I recorded my top 10 John Mayer fingerstyle songs video. But of course I just had to put Neon in it, so I finally dared to take on the challenge. I listened to the song, practiced for hours and hours until I finally got it right. Well, that's what I thought at the time, because hearing it back now, I feel like I could have done much better. Because I'm not really getting the essentials of the song, the heartbeat, the backbone rather. I just play the correct notes after each other, but something is really missing. When learning this song, you might think the most important thing to get down are the fretting hand chord shapes and the probably new to you picking technique. But diving deeper into this song, I think I've discovered the four most fundamental things that make this version sound so great and at the same time make it so difficult. For those who wonder, what makes the song Neon so incredibly hard to play? Let me explain. For starters, the chords themselves are not your typical triad chord shapes. If anything, the shapes are quite unique and for some definitely a challenge to get down. It starts with C minor, not much played as a chord by the way, just a root and a fifth of the chord. Followed by an E flat sus2. From here on out, he uses his thumb to fret the bass notes on that low C string. For John, this is second nature, but for us mortals who don't have those giant thumbs, according to Mr. Mayer himself, I think it's just as good to just use the four fingers instead of the thumb. Whilst using the thumb can have many benefits when playing guitar, for this particular figure, I don't see any benefits. Therefore, you can just as well use the fingers instead of creating too much unwanted tension in your hand. After this chord, we go to the E flat sus4 over F chord. A pretty colorful chord, not something you'll see a lot in your run of the mill pop song. Followed by an E flat sus4, but now with a different voicing of the chord and with a different bass note. E flat sus4 over A flat. And to conclude this, there's a C sus2 over B flat chord, which John himself didn't get right in his own tabbed out version of the song. Warning. If you try to play the shape with the thumb, chances are you'll dislocate something in your hand. So now those are the chords and I hear you thinking, is that all? No, because then there's also the picking. John's right hand technique is not something you learn in the books or in any school for that matter. And I think it's the result from what once was a pretty flawed technique, but then turned into a brilliant new playing style. He is known to just use his thumb and index finger playing the strings. But meanwhile, most fingerstyle guitarists use their thumb, index, middle, and even the ring finger. But the way John does it, it sometimes feels like he's playing with even more fingers than fit on one hand. This technique, 
ingeniously implemented in songs like Heart of Life or Who Says, has a remarkable way of presenting itself in this riff. Let me show you. Guitar. In this figure he plays four strings in a row, a so-called arpeggio. A normal fingerstyle player would play this without any doubt as thumb, index, middle and ring finger. But because he just uses his thumb and index, he had to come up with something else. And that something else goes like this. The thumb plays the low C string. The following string is played by the index finger. So far pretty normal. But now his thumb takes over, going all the way to the G string. Now That's an alternating thumb pattern, isn't it? And for the last note, he's using his index finger again playing the B string. So this is what that sounds like. Pretty strange technique, right? So now you may think, can't I just use my middle and ring finger for this? Well no, because playing the notes with the thumb and index finger only is quite essential for getting everything right in this riff. You'll see later why that is, but what you can do is play the highest string with your middle finger instead of the index finger. But the thumb going all the way to the G string needs to happen for sure. It's a technique Mark Knopfler also likes to use. The thumb dictating the rhythm, filling in the gaps, making sure the groove keeps on going. But that's still not everything to it, right? Nope. So about that thumb. His playing style is highly percussive, meaning that he creates sounds associated with, yeah, percussion instruments. In this case, it's the slap. It's almost substituting the snare drum of a drum kit. So what almost everyone realizes is that the opening note of this riff is a slap. And yes, it's quite obvious. But what's hidden in all those notes, and missed out by so many, including me back in the day, is that the afterbeats get accentuated by that slap. This means that we're basically playing an accent on what normally would be the weak beats, beats two and four. He adds a slap to give it that classic afterbeat rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this is a thing John often does. It's featured in songs like Who Says, Stop This Train, Heart of Life, Why Georgia, etc. It's a great tool to simulate a bigger sound than just the one guitar you're playing. Adding the percussive slap gives it a direction. It adds another layer on top, or should I say beneath those harmonies and melodies creating a sense of an entire band on just the one instrument. And don't forget, in Neon, he's playing all of those arpeggios, skipping string with that alternating thumb, and meanwhile slapping around. Oh man. But that thumb isn't just used to play the slapping percussive rhythm. No. It's also used to add another instrument we're still missing at the moment. Let me explain. So this is one of the most overlooked aspects of this riff. And I've seen countless of covers, that I all respect greatly by the way, that miss this key feature. Adding it really makes all the difference. Underneath all the madness of notes, there is a real groovy bass line going on. And if you don't know it, you probably don't even hear it. But if you take it out, the entire riff falls apart. And the bass line by itself sounds like this. The way he incorporates this all in between those chords is having transition notes between the arpeggios. So the arpeggios are played at the first and the third beat of each bar. One, two, three, four. So we've got a whole beat left after the chords to transition between the arpeggios. So in that one beat gap, he of course plays that slap we talked about, but also one or even two accents and a bass note. So that bass note falls exactly at the last eighth note before changing chords, creating that bass line. So let me emphasize the transitioning notes. So in total slowly.
And these are the bass notes. In this riff there are three different parts that go in against each other, creating something special which is more than just the sum of all parts. On the one hand we've got the arpeggiated chords, setting the scene with their complex and rich voicings. And then we've got the bass line coming in, together with the transitioning notes from chord to chord. Creating an intricate web of notes without ever colliding. And to top this all off, we've got the percussive slap. Creating a steady, thriving rhythm behind all of this. This keeps you at the ground, giving an easy to grasp grid to all the complicated patterns around it. And that is why the song Neon is so incredibly difficult to fully master. And you know what the craziest thing is? At the same time all of this is happening, the slapping, the crazy chords, the bass line, John is also singing a song. Come to think of it, the part we've discussed is only just a verse. Well, that's something for a future video, maybe. Thanks for watching, tabs of my explanation are available on my Patreon page. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Click subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified by all my future videos. And I hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful day.